Patrick's tight. from Dunklin lead the parade, a very colourful uh, parade it is too. And we have the 125 year parade a few moments before that. And just as we speak, our whole break from the parade. And very quickly, we'll give you the two teams, our whole side with Brian Coleman and Gold. And then the full back line of Paul Coney, Mark McKillen wearing three, and Eugene Devlin wearing four. Half back line of Kieran Campbell, the captain of the side. Then Gavin Page, centre half back wearing six, and Shea Forbes wearing seven. 
middle of the field, where number eight is Mickey Coleman, and he's part of five, one of the four McGuigan brothers. That's Tommy McGuigan wearing nine. Number 10 is Tal Coney, number 11 is Brian McGuigan, and number 12 is the youngest of the McGuigan clan, and that's Shane McGuigan. At 13, corner forward Gavin Wiley, and 14 is Frank John McConville, and wearing 15 is Frank McGuigan, the oldest of the four McGuigan brothers. There's a more team in the huddles on my left hand side, Peter Ward in goals. Number two is Fabian O'Neill, number three is Carl McCarn, and number four is Colin Donnelly. Half back line of Kevin Donnelly, Ryan McManaman, and Sean O'Neill, a very experienced half back line that. Middle of the field is Michael Guy wearing number eight, Barry Collins wearing number nine, and then the half forward line is Shane McMahon wearing number ten, Colin McCullough wearing number eleven, and Paddy Modicu wearing number twelve. Number 13 is Sean O'Neill, number 14 is Owen McCusker, and number 15 for the youngest players on the side is Ronan McNabb. As both sides are in their last few words and the last bits of instructions been given out by both captains over there. There's the more captain is um, Colin McCullough, and we'll have our national anthem now, and it'll be sung by uh, Kate McCusker from the Oma St. Dennis Club. So we'll pause for our national anthem, our Ron Nevian. Section there with Sean O'Neill. Sean O'Neill from distance, but that looks as if it's going to be the first wide of the game. It is the first wide of the game, and it's from um, Shane McMahon. Uh, Sean O'Neill, I believe we've had that shot. We just looked at massive crowd in here in Healy Park for this match. Eagerly anticipated, not to talk about this game. Colin McCullough, he's been picked up there by um, Shea Ford, so all sorts of switches on, on both sides. Great atmosphere, great noise as the kick out is taken there. Over the far side by Ryan Coleman. Coleman delivers it. Up to go for that big man, John McConville, who gathers it. He is 14 on his back, but he's playing middle of the field. Gives it into Gavin Tang. Tang looks for Brian McGuigan. McGuigan has him. McGuigan is tackled strongly. Tackled illegally, says the referee. He's tackled by Mike and Guy. And the free will go to our ball. But Brian McGuigan takes it quickly. Tries to feed it inside. The referee spots a free in there. It was Kyle Coney, who's been picked up by Tom McCarran. Coney's come in. He's wearing number 10. He's playing full forward. And he, oh well, here's a little bit of. Uh, 
been a set to down below us for the referees. Keep an eye on that there. It's number seven, Sean O'Neill, and number two, Paul Coney. But where the ball is, the ball is in the hands of Frank McGuigan. And Frank McGuigan will take the kick right for it. This is a chance for the opening score of the game. Frank has scored seven points in the championship to date. He is the joint leading scorer for Ahu, along with his brother Tommy. Here he comes. This should be a simple chance. It is a simple chance. It's the opening score of the game. We've played a minute and 50 seconds and our goal get the first point of the game courtesy of Frank McGuigan. So the 30 year old Frank pops that one over the bar. He can knock down there by Fabian O'Neill. That's the goalkeeper. Peter Ward puts the ball on the 20 meter line. Looks up, assesses whether he kick it left or right or kick it down the middle. Will he go short? Here he comes, kicks it right footer. Not a great, didn't get a great connection on it, but comes out towards Roland McNaughton, picked up by Barry Collins. Collins gives it over there towards uh, McMahon. McMahon feeds it forward again, turned towards Sean O'Neill. Sean O'Neill needs support, he has it there from Barry Collins. Collins looks up, delivers long right footed in round the Dave Duray. McCuskill goes for it, the ball goes the way. Sean Stoney O'Neill has it. O'Neill tries to turn inside his man, well blocked and well cut off there. The ball eventually fell back out to Paddy Montague to Sean O'Neill. Sean right footed. Sean Red O'Neill, that's all, that's a brilliant effort from Sean O'Neill, wonderful score from Sean O'Neill and the sides are level after 2 minutes and 50 seconds, a lot of action in between some of the players out there, there's a little slap in the face by number 5 there, Kieran Campbell, He's giving a wee slap in the face there for Sean O'Neill and, and that's very interesting because those two men roomed together in the house in Belfast, believe it or not, Kieran Campbell and Sean O'Neill, one Kieran Campbell is the captain of our bull side, and he lives in the same house in Belfast as Sean O'Neill, and he's actually giving him a little bit of a slap there. Whatever, the scoreboard reads a point apiece, three and a half minutes play. Rudy McNabb knocks the ball forward, going in chasing forward as Colin McCullough, close to the side, and McCullough chips a heavy tackle there, pushed out over the side, and the referee says there's an illegal push. The free will go the way of Arbo and Colin McCullough. He takes it left footed into that man, Sean O'Neill again. He really is pumped up for this game, gives it to Mickey Guy. Guy into McManaman. McManaman 50 metres out, gives it back to Guy. Guy to Collins. Collins looks up, delivers it long. It's on its way, it's high, it's long, and it's over the bar. A wonderful score. A brilliant score from Barry Collins. Two long distance scores for our goal. We've played three and a half minutes here, and it's Sean O'Neill and Barry Collins with two excellent scores, and that puts the more significant two points to one ahead. Four minutes played. Four minutes played here, and two points to one in favour of the more. Kick out will be taken by Ryan Coleman, 21 year old. Colin McCullough, he's gone in playing full forward, so two in there with him is McCusker and Snowy O'Neill. Ball breaks this time, picked up by Mickey Guy. Guy looks up and gives it in long inside over. Not if give it down there towards Sean O'Neill. Sean Red O'Neill, this is, gives it across the ball. Good, well, the intention was good, but as well cut out there by Kieran Campbell. Campbell plays the ball off there towards Michael Coleman. Coleman looks for Gavin Riley. Coming out in front and winning that ball for the Moors, the cornerback, Colin Donnelly. And Donnelly continues his attack. Donnelly's 45 metres out. There's another chance to score. Gives it to Snowy. Snowy on to the right. This could be the third point. Well, Snowy had a brilliant chance there, but it's gone to the left and it's gone wide. Second wide. Second wide of the game. Okay. So five minutes played, two points to one in favour of the Moor. Yes, Austin, we've played five and a half minutes here in the first half, and it's two points to one to the favourites, and that's the more. It was our boat who got off the next to the start with a point from Frank McGuigan from 20 metres out, and he caught the ball over the bar. But then the more, who's really been in the sands since, they notched the next and score from Sean Red O'Neill with two Sean O'Neills playing out here, of course, Snowy O'Neill and Red O'Neill. Well, it was Sean Red O'Neill who kicked the first point from 45 metres, and then that was equaled by a magnificent score from Barry Collins, which puts the more. Two points to one. It's feisty. There's a magnificent crowd in here in Healy Park. The Moor and Abu are really pumped up for this one. Two sides are lined out as selected. It is interesting. It's hot and heavy at the moment. And it's the Moor who lead two points to one after six and a half minutes also. 
Well, a little bit of after down here now between Colin McCullough and Shea Ford. But the referee is waiting to give some attention. <coughs> down there is it Rowan McNabb maybe that's picking up has picked up an injury and he's looking to get some attention down there. Meanwhile the referee is having a word there. A yellow card. It's uh, Kevin Donnelly. Well the referee had a word with Kieran Cameron. I don't know where he picked up a yellow card or not, but let me check that one out later on. Colin McCullough takes the kick, is it in towards Sean Story O'Neill? O'Neill lives it back there. It's O'Barry Collins, he's pulled back. That's a free, I'm sure. Yes indeed. It's uh, Martin McKeown who is the offender on that occasion. And this should be a fairly relatively easy chance for Colin McCullough to extend the Moore's lead. They lead two points to one. And McCullough, who is interestingly the top scorer for the Moore, he's hit 112. He's not only the top scorer for the Moore, but he's the top scorer in the championship to date this year. It looks as if he'll be picking up the title of top scorer in the Prince County Championship. Well, that's added to his tally. That's 113 in the championship to date. It's his first point of the day, it's three points to one now in favour of the Moore, who spread his scores, one from a free, that one from Colin McCullough, the other one from right half forward, Sean O'Neill, and the other one from Barry Collins, the midfielder. And in fact, Sean O'Neill is now playing centre half forward, so it's all changing that forward line for the Moore. It's a um, kick out now for Mickey Coleman, or for Ryan Coleman, I should say. Kicks it right for him. Well, McCormick does well, feeds off, or hands off, Mickey Gary gets his kick away, but not a good one, easy intercepted by Colin Donnelly, Donnelly fists it, but not a good pass there, this time it's picked up by Gavin Tigg, Tigg gives it back inside, uh, Brian McGregor goes for him, well, leaves it there for his brother Tommy, Tommy McGregor coming forward, coming way away, looking at the post, tries to cut inside, has Gavin Tigg with him, fists it in towards Gavin Tigg, that's a good ball, Tigg in on goal, well, he's cleaned out of it there, by Fabian O'Neill. Well, what's the referee going to award here? It looks like it was outside the area, but there's a little bit of afters there as well. And now there's a number of players involved, so the initial tackle there was by Fabian O'Neill. And then it's Gavin Tigg who's on the, on the ground, so the referee really needs to sort this one out pretty quickly. We don't need this sort of interference in the game. Fabian O'Neill will be called over by the referee, Sean Quinn. And I don't believe that Fabian O'Neill may well pick up a yellow card here. Well, didn't see any card there at all, so that's why he's had a word with Fabian O'Neill. Meanwhile, the free will be taken by Kyle Coney. This is an easy opportunity for Coney. This is a chance from the 13 metre line. Suit the left footed kicker, Coney. He has scored two points in the championship today. This should be number three. He looks up, kicks it, it's all his way, it's over the bar, another score, four, all boot, that's three points to two, <coughs> three points to two in favour of the Moore. <coughs> Peter Ward will take the kick out, 20 metres out, still some rain tripping down here in Healy Park. Brilliant crowd in for this occasion, the 2009 Championship Final. Of course, although frequent visitors to the Championship Arena over the years, they will have seven titles to their name and the more only half of one, that one in 2007. Of course, they played in the final last year, but beaten by Cano as the ball is picked up there by Shane McMahon. McMahon to Fabian O'Neill. Fabian this time decides to kick it long. Looking for Rice McManaman. McManaman up against his county colleague, Tommy McGuigan. Tommy McGuigan wins that battle on this occasion. Gives the ball back there towards Paul Coney. Coney looks up, 65 minutes out from goal. Cross field ball, good ball into space. Looking to find the wing half back. That's Peter Campbell to get to the side. Campbell comes striding forward. Campbell has Wiley with him. Will he go for his own score? This is the level and from Campbell. It's for the level from Kieran Campbell. The size the level. The captain leads by example. The captain has pointed. It's three points apiece. And really, this has been a very entertaining opening to this championship final. Mickey Donnelly, the manager of our pool, down below us. The man from Adelaide, the man was with Neil Bridge last year. Well, he has really turned the fortunes of our goal around this year, guiding them to the first final in 11 years. And down to my right hand side, you see Ryan Porter and Seamus Goodwin. They're the joint management of the remorse and dipness. 
And yeah, as I say, I've been in the final of the past three years. Third final appearance in a row for the men from Dromore. It's three points apiece, 11 and a half minutes played. Peter Ward with the kick out. Up the goal for the ball breaks. This time, he's looking at Ronan McNabb, but that's a heavy challenge there. And there, yeah, Ronan McNabb, the referee, what a word. With him, Kieran Campbell involved in, in the game. And John McCampbell, big midfielder, has the ball in his hand. Coney makes his move. Coney has fed the ball. Coney is in possession towards his man. His man was Shane McMahon. Still, Coney tries to beat his inside. Fabian O'Neill knocks it away there. And the ball is with Rice and McMahon. Rice, good ball down towards Sean O'Neill. Sean Red O'Neill on this occasion gives it inside, looking for it. Is it McCusker striding out there to get it? McCusker does well towards his man. His man is Eugene Devlin. Still, McCusker on the left up. McCusker shot. Oh, a brilliant score from Owen McCusker. That's a fabulous score from Owen McCusker. His opening score of the day. Wonderful effort. He scored one six in the championship debate. Make that one seven. The ball was fed into him by Sean Red O'Neill. He turned his man. His man was Eugene Devlin. He was on his left foot. Kicks the ball over the bar. Four points to three. There he is. Ding dong battle here, of course. Our goal level matters there a few moments ago. But that point from Old McCusker is a four points to three in favour of the men from the Moor. 13 minutes played. Kick out taken there by Ryan Coleman. Coleman gives it down. This time it's Kieran Campbell again wins the ball. Gives it forward there towards Shane McGregor. McGregor gives it back there to Campbell. But Campbell's just possessed in this occasion by Kevin Donnelly. And Kevin Donnelly is a judge to be fouled. Dolly leaves it there for Ronan McNabb to take the kick. McNabb, one of the younger players on this side, Null Ireland minor winner last year. A one that there's a lot expected of. He kicks it down to another man who played on that team. He thought he's on that position today. He's had a long time last year. That's Kyle Coney back deep in his own defence. Gives it over to Shea Ford. Ford's intelligent fist the ball to Paul Coney. Coney gives it back to Kyle Coney. Kyle 65 minutes out from goal, treads the ball down to the ring, down towards his captain, Kieran Campbell. Campbell is shouldered out there by Ron McNabb. The referee says that's an illegal shoulder as well. And the free will go the way of the men from our goal. Uh, well, the captain, Kieran Campbell, he's been involved in everything in these a few minutes. Got a point for his side as well. The ball bounces away from Brian McGregor, but back to Coney. Coney this time decides to deliver it long down towards Frank McGregor. McGregor this time is dispossessed by Fabian O'Neill and also coming out over there with the far side of the field is Colin Donnelly. Donnelly striding forward, has support from Rice. Rice McManaman. Rice is still on the ball, 65 metres out, 65 over the 45. Gives it down towards McCusker, the ball bounces off him. In there goes Barry Collins. Colin Steps will it be kept to play? Will it be by Shane McMahon? McMahon goes well, that's a push for back and well, a silly free to give away and that free will go the way of the more and it be, should be a relatively easy one for Colin McCullough. But that was a, a silly error there in the rear guard. It was Shane McMahon. Really wasn't going anywhere. Going away from goal. Defender came out, pushed him in the back. Referee Sean Quinn. And no one can but to get the free. So a free in for the more. So the point now is that the kick will be taken by Colin McCullough. McCullough's got one point to his name already in this game. 31 year old. All Ireland winner. And Mickey Hart's teams in the last only. It, and, yeah, that's a good effort there from Colin McCullough. Ball goes over the bar. Another point from McCullough. That's his second of the day. Colin uh, McCullough stretches the Moors lead to two, five points to three now in favour of the Drew Moment. Second point there from Colin McCullough. Please remove your car from where it is. And BD Park, that is so a five points to three to the right. in favour of the Moor. 15 and a half minutes played. Kick out by Ryan Coleman. Coleman delivers it down towards Joe McNabb. McNabb wins the ball. He's turned back there by, by Coney. The ball fits the forward then by Shane McMahon. McMahon gives it down towards Mickey Gary. Gary inside towards McMahon. This is a good opportunity for McMahon. McMahon still going forward. Well intercepted and well put out there by Luke Gavin Craig. The centre half back to put that one out. Done well. And Tomoa have a chance to, or Abo have a chance to build the game with Tommy McGregor. McGregor 
Cuts up, has support inside, and that support is provided by Shea Ford. Ford presses inside again. McGregor this time delivers it long. Long ball to the wall. Way out of the stage, but Fabian O'Neill goes well. Knocks the ball down towards Cal McCann. McCann delivers it right for it over towards uh, Ron McNabb. McNabb has it. McNabb has support inside there from Sean O'Neill. Sean delivers it. Looking for the other Sean O'Neill. Sean Snowy O'Neill doesn't manage to retain his action. First opportunity, and the ball is broken away. Brian McGregor comes out with it for the more. Gives the ball down. Looking for his brother. His brother's Frank. Frank goes well. Turns. Uh, Fabian O'Neill needs support, has it there with Brian McGuigan is fired. McGuigan's fired and the referee wants a word with Barry Collins because Brian McGuigan was coming on to that gate ball and well Collins deliberately took him out and the referee wants a word with the big midfielder Barry Collins. Meanwhile it will be a free for Brian McGuigan and for Albo. The referee has a little word with Barry Collins but nothing more than a word. So the free Sean Quinn from Brackenville is the referee. He tells Brian McGuigan where to take it from. Brian McGuigan scored one point in the championship to date. And what an important score that was. That was the winning score against Tilly Clower in the semi-final. Now he's left the ball for his brother Tommy. Tommy more renowned for taking frees, particularly from this sort of distance. He has taken it from Tyrone on numerous occasions. Should, should have the distance. Has he the accuracy? Well, it's on its way, it's high, but it looks as if it's gone to the right and gone wide. Well, there's a lot of uncertainty there in the uh, bow ranks there about who should be taking that free and whether they go short, whether they kick it long. And I think that all had an impact, and eventually um, Tommy McGregor kicked it for the, maybe for the sake of just getting rid of it. And it looked that way as it went to the right hand side and went wide. So the kick out would be taken by Peter Ward. Ward. 27 year old from Dromore. Kicks it out. Very cloudy and misty here in Healy Park. The ball breaks favourably there for Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon feeds the ball down looking for four and a Paddy Monarchy. Monarchy goes well, gives the ball forward looking for Ryan McManaman. McManaman oh, well cut out there by McCone. McCone tosses with Sean O'Neill. Referee shows that uh, shoulder in the back. And McCone done very well there. Very crucial inter interception there by Mark McEwen. Oh, the free will go away of our boat. 18 and a half minutes played. Um, Sarbo who lead five points to three. Well there by Rowan McNabb. McNabb gives it to Collins. Collins gives it over there towards Paddy Monaghy. Monaghy looking inside there. Feeds the ball back out there towards Sean. Sean O'Neill. Sean O'Neill gives it back to Barry Collins. Collins on the left this time from distance. He got one on his right earlier on. Oh, brilliant effort by Barry Collins. Wonderful score. His second of the day. And um, well, if the first one was good with his right foot, that's an exceptional score there by Barry Collins with his left foot after, what, 19 and a half minutes played. And it's the more now we need. Six points to three double scores. So they will be happy. Seamus Goodwin and Brian Porter will be happy with this start. They've scored the last three points. It was three each after 11 minutes. And then Owen McCusker, Colin McCullough, and Barry Collins with points. It means it's six points to three. It's the referee this time. Has a word with Kieran Campbell. Well, Campbell, is, as I said earlier, he's been involved in everything. But this time, I think the referee has seen enough. And this will be a yellow card for Kieran Campbell. First yellow card of the game, I think. And the player of Captain Kieran Campbell will have to watch his mark. That's the kick out. Be taken by Brian Coleman. Coleman, ball knocked forward there, picked up there. The centre field by that point scorer there, Barry Collins. Collins is fouled. Free will go the way of the more. Be taken by Colin McCullough. McCullough kicks it left forward into space, looking for Sean Snowy O'Neill. He challenges again with Campbell. The ball breaks away and breaks towards Martin McKeown. McKeown has it, gives it back out, and it eventually is picked up there by Shane McGuigan. Shane McGuigan lays the ball over, heavy challenge there by Owen McCusker. And uh, well, a good challenge it was. He put ball and man and everything out of the side of the man of Eugene Devlin, and the line ball goes the way of the man from the more. Rowan and McNabb has it tried to feed Ricey, but Ricey left it behind him, it goes back to McNabb. McNabb gives it back towards Sean O'Neill. Sean Red O'Neill this time goes for the post, but this time he snatched at it and goes to the left hand side and goes wide. And that's the Moore's third wide of this opening half. A half that, well, it has to be said, they have been in the ascendancy for a fair bit of it. Winning a lot of the loose ball in around the middle and getting the forwards moving, particularly Sean O'Neill. 
And Ronan McNabb, the half forward line, working very, very hard. Paddy Montague, Sean O'Neill, and Ronan McNabb. Check out, will be taken again by Ryan Coleman. Coleman kicks a right footed up the goal for it again, and Mickey Guy sees it this time. Well, they're dominating the midfield sector. This period in the game, the ball down towards Snowy O'Neill. Snowy leaves it behind the ball, inside towards Ronan McNabb. I mentioned a few moments ago, there he goes, McNabb, but another brilliant score for the more, and really they are in the sense he at this stage. And it's that man, Ronan McNabb, who, well, he's all over the place in this opening half. Well, now four points in the championship today, make that five now. Excellent score and excellent spread of scores throughout the uh, more side. Ronan McNabb, Barry Collins with two, Colin McCullough with two, Oral McCullough scored one, Sean Red O'Neill with one. So, good spread of scores. And I believe we have to address this issue of winning primary possession in round the midfield area. John McConville, a lot expected from him. I think six foot six or six foot seven man. This time, well, the deal win primary possession. This time with Tommy McGuigan. Tommy McGuigan. Did he carry it too long? The referee says no. Play continues. Ball fed over there. Towards the corner back. Coming forward is Paul Coney. Coney, 45 minutes out from goal. Gives it inside. Towards uh, Brian McGuigan. McGuigan will go good intelligent ball. Towards Gavin Wiley. Well, too much distance on him. Out over Wiley's head. Another wide for our vote. Our second off the game. And the scoreboard reads seven points to three in favour of the more. Excellent crowd in here and joining us. Willie John beat the 1-0, 12 points to 10. They then beat Oma in the quarter-final, 1-10 to 2-6 in a pulsating game in Pomeroy. And then their semi-final victory over Tilly Clara, 1-7 to 9 points. As the ball is kicked out there by Peter Ward, finds Barry Collins. Collins moved out and he's able to gather up on. Good block down there by Michael Coleman. Ball bobbling about, Coleman goes down, gathers it up. Coleman, so is the ball, 65 minutes out, Coleman still going, Coleman now 45 minutes out, looks up, a good delivered ball in there towards Frank McGuigan, oh brilliant block, what a fantastic block by Fabian O'Neill, well, that is just quality bravery, you name it, Fabian O'Neill showed it all there, ball given away however, ball is given inside now towards Kyle Coney, Coney tries to find Wiley, a brilliant interception again by Colin Donnelly, well, the Drumore backs are tenacious, they're really, really, really up for this. Brilliant block there by Fabian O'Neill, and then a brilliant interception by Colin Donnelly. Super corner back play by O'Neill and Donnelly. And the free is taken quickly. Peter Ward takes it, tries to find Colin McCullough. McCullough doesn't gather it the first time. Ball knocked away from him. Ball kicked forward there, but oh, Fabian O'Neill goes to ground. Gets it over towards Ron McNabb. McNabb gets it to Sean Red O'Neill. Sean. Midfield area kicks it long, looking for him. Cusper is it inside. Will it bounce over him? It does bounce over him and straight into the hands of the goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper is Ryan Coleman. Coleman so is the ball, kicks it out right footed. 45 metres out from goal. Abo need a score. Haven't got, haven't got a score now since the 11th minute. We're now in the 24th minute. So the referee now wants a word with Colin McCullough for a late challenge there. I believe it was on the, the corner back there. Is it Paul Coney possibly who's down there? Receiving some attention, referee having a word with Ronan McNabb as well, but no yellow cards. 25 minutes played, and Stamore who lead seven points to three. Colin McCullough, ref having a word with him as well, but McConville, the big midfielder. We'll take the result in free. We have what? Four and a half minutes to half time. And McConville delivers it long and high. These two sides met in the semi final last year. Well, the more won that one quite comfortably. Fabian O'Neill having an outstanding opening. 25 minutes. Ball half blocked down there, but eventually it comes there towards Barry Collins. Collins all over the park. Rice is looking for it. Collins has it. Slows the play. Gives it back inside. Is that Cal McCarn has it? Get the time. Gives it to Mickey Guy. Guy to Rice and McManaman. Bricey gives it low ball inside, looking there for um, Carl McCarran, the full-back off brilliant play here by Vermore over to McManaman. McManaman's in the acres of space, he's been trying to be close down by his county colleague, that's Brian McGuigan, feeds the ball back out, not a good ball, easily cut out there by Shea Forbes for our boat. Forbes gives it to Brian McGuigan, McGuigan is fouled by Snowy, and the free is taken very quickly by 
Brian McGregor gives it over there towards Paul Coney. Coney spreads the play over the far side of the field. Coming forward is Kieran Cameron. Gives it inside there towards Gavin Tig. Tig, well blocked and well stopped. Brilliant play again by Shane McMahon. McMahon this time looks up, gives it down towards Owen McCusker. McCusker scored a brilliant point early on. Was he fired? Referee says play advantage. Advantage has been played. McCullough gets it back there now. And eventually Sean O'Neill crossed the ball towards his midfielder. That's Mickey Guy. The guy closed down there by Kyle Coney. Fist the ball forward there, looking for um, is the corner back, is it called Donnelly? Yes, but Donnelly gives it away. A lot of players back deep behind the ball as Abu got the possession. They have really the score, they haven't gotten for all of since the 11th minute of this half. As Frank McGregor leaves the ball behind him, and who has for Fabian O'Neill comes out and plays a brilliant ball down towards Barry Collins. Collins has support by Roland McNabb. McNabb in possession. McNabb gives it to Sean O'Neill. Sean O'Neill to Collins. Collins going pin to the ground. That's a free, I'm sure. Referee allowed play to continue, but well, that really was a free. Referee allows play to continue, but that's a poor decision there by referee Sean Quinn, it has to be said. I mean, Barry Collins is holding the ground. Referee tried to play advantage for them. Well, decided that the free should go the other way. So, seven points to three in favour of the Moore. Three will be taken by John McConville. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ball set forward there again. And well, the Moore certainly need a score. It's coming forward with it now as Ken Coney. Coney gives it down towards Frank McGregor. McGregor turns his man as man as Fabian O'Neill lays the ball forward there. Chance for Coney McGregor now. Another good ball. That goes out over the far side. Gavin Tig in support there. Tig in possession. Kicks it left footed, but it's curling, curling, curling. Will it be kept in play? No, it's gone to the left hand side. It's gone wide, another wide for Abo. Okay. They played 28 and a half minutes and they lead seven points to three. When you were with me last, two, a Barry Collins point and a Sean O'Neill point had left at two points to one after uh, three minutes, but then points from Colin McCullough was cancelled out by points from Kyle Coney and their captain Kieran Campbell. Meant it was three points apiece after 11 minutes, but our ball failed to score since that 11 minute. And since then, Owen McCusker, Colin McCullough, Barry Collins and young Roland McNabb have all notched points for the 2007 winners and it's the more who are in control as we approach half time, seven points to three, they lead and we have what, a minute left and half time, awesome. Okay. Seven points to three in favour of the Moors. We're through half time. One minute of additional time as we play. Fabian O'Neill, he's having a stormer. Out the front wins the ball. Gives it in towards Rice and McManaman. McManaman to Barry Collins. Collins in possession. Collins looks up, looks for movement. The movement, well, it wasn't provided by McCullough, but it was intercepted by Gavin Tay. Tay gives the ball down towards Brian McGuigan. McGuigan slips, goes to ground, has support there from Mickey Coleman. Coleman gives it back to McGuigan. 45 metres out from goal. McGuigan still good ball to Gavin Tay. Tay inside to McGuigan. McGuigan back to Tay. This is better from the Rob Bowman. Tay fists the ball. Will it make it over the bar? Yes, indeed it has. It's over the bar. It took a defender to come forward. Gavin Tay. Tay eventually fists the ball over the bar is the first score since the 11th minute and as my maths are right that's what 19 minutes since the registered the score so they needed that one an important score just before half time gives them a little bit of heart going in at half time seven points to four three points just between the sides so for all the dominance that the more have had there's only just one score between the teams that would be that would take a goal as suppose to change that referee sean quinn looks at his watch He'd probably call for the ball. The minute, well, the minute just hasn't been played as yet. There's about 10 seconds or so left. It'll be interesting to see whether he blows it off or not. Peter Ward with the kick out. No, he's going to allow play to continue. Barry Collins with, oh, a heavy challenge there on Barry Collins by Shane McGuigan. The referee allows play to come, go forward. And that man, McGuigan, Shane McGuigan is in possession. Tries to take it in. Oh, brilliant again by Fabian O'Neill. Just got his fingertips to it and no more. And now the referee does call for the ball. And it's half time here in Healy Park, and it's seven points to four in favour of the more. Barry Collins is down on the ground receiving some attention. Well, it was, it was three points apiece after 11 minutes, but four points from the top 
from the moor, from the cusp of McCullough, Colin from McNabb, and that's the seven to four after 23 minutes, and then that point there from Gavin Keg just before the break means that at half time in the 2009 Senior Championship final, it's uh, to, Bo to Moor, seven points, or the whole four points. Second half is on the way. Immediately it's big John McConville who fetches the ball for a ball, gives it forward, not a good ball. Easily picked up there by Shane McMahon. McMahon gives it to the full match of Mickey Gary. But Gary gives it away to Brian McGuigan. McGuigan has Pony in support. Pony on the left. What is he? 40 metres out. Kicks in. A oh, brilliant score from Kyle Pony. You just cannot give that man any space or any time. And he punished well. It was Mickey Gary's mistake. Give the ball away. Kyle Pony fetched the ball and delivers the ball over the bar for the open score of the second and half after what 26 seconds and that brings the gap down to just two points that's an important score from Kai Cody for their bowl man that's his second point of the game so the one from the free earlier on that's the second one as the kick out is now taken by Peter Ward 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 looks again for Barry Collins. Collins makes his move, but this time doesn't get his hands on it. But getting his hands to it there is Michael Coleman, but Coleman kicks it out over the sideline. Sideline ball, Barry Collins kicks it. Not a good ball again by Collins, this time easily picked up by Gavin Tigg. Tigg feeds the ball forward again, this time it's into the hands of Shane McGuigan. McGuigan kicks it left footed. Colin Carl McCarran trying to get an underneath to keep his eye on, but Gavin Wiley intercepts it, gets it to Brian McGuigan. Brian McGuigan goes to ground, races there. Mickey Gary's there, slightly tackled by Fabian O'Neill. The referee allows play to continue. The ball fed in towards Gavin Wiley. Wiley has support, the ball's back in the hands of McGuigan. And McGuigan, I believe it is, that came forward there and knocked the ball over the bar for a point. Four our goal reduces the gap to just one. It's Tommy McGuigan, I think, that has strode forward there. Yes, indeed, Tommy McGuigan, his opening point of the match. But this is a brilliant start to the second half for the men from the lock shore. Uh, our goal is Dunvant Rosses. They have scored two points in the space of the opening minute and a half. And they now have the gap down to a point. Seven points to six. Seven points to six. Two minutes played here in the second half as Peter Ward takes the kick out for our goal. Ward kicks it right for him. Ball breaks loose. First to it again. He was at Ronan McNabb and Kyle Coney. McNabb does well. Stays on his feet. The man fists it forward down there. And Montague fists it forward down there looking for the Tusker. Or I should say it's Montague. Montague loses out to Gavin Tigg. Tigg to McConville. McConville has support there, but not too play by McConville. Mickey Guy gets his foot on and kicks it down left footer. Down it goes towards the captain, Kieran Campbell. Campbell slips back close to the sideline, gives it out there towards Paul Coney. Coney back deep in his own defence. Coney solos the ball, 45 minutes out from goal. Good play here by Paul Coney. Okay. Paul Coney. There's some more come forward with Sean O'Neill. Sean O'Neill in possession, 45 minutes out. Maybe not because it's uh, our bowl has made a sensation start to this second half just to bring you up to date with the halftime score was seven points to four at half time when Gavin Tig it was 7-3 before Gavin Tig came forward with the last play of the uh, first half. He fisted the ball over the bar. That was the centre half back Tig who left at seven points to four. Then at the start of the second half, Kyle Coney robbed the ball of Mickey Gary and strode forward and popped it over the bar with his left foot for his second point of the day. And then Tommy McGuigan with an excellent score means that it's seven points to six and we've played three and a half minutes of the second half and from more or whatever we said to our goal at half time they've come out a different side they're all poked up they're firing all over the place they're more aggressive winning ball all over the place and they've registered two early scores so Austin seven points to six not sure where the O'Neill Cup will be residing whether it's east or west we'll know maybe in what 25 minutes or so Seven points to six, favourite to more. What happened there? Play will resume here now with a free for the men from Arbo. Ball kicked forward by Brian McGuigan, a lot of distance on it. Collins decides to leave at this time, it's picked up there inside. Brian McGuigan gives it in, there's a ball in space! 
Chelsea goal, it is a goal! It's a goal for a goal and a goal for Shane McGregor. The ball, well, it was a bit of in the middle of the field, but the ball went in over the top. Nobody really reacted to it. And in behind, and stealing in behind was Shane McGregor, and it's a goal for our goal. Okay. Brian McGregor, nobody went for it. Is that right? Well, we're six to seven points now. What a sensational turnaround this has been in this second half. Yes, indeed, and it is all our goal in this second half, and it's a goal for the youngest of the McGregor's, and it was the youngest and Brian who were involved, and it was a free that was taken from what? 70 metres out or so, a long, long distance. A lot of defenders and forwards went for them, missed it, and it, as the ball comes in again, no a chance for it. Oh, ball, and the goal is grabbed by the oh, he's left it too long. Will he get it over the left? He will, it's curling, curling. But it's oh, it's all a little score for Gavin Riley. Let me finish the explanation about the goal. It was young Shane McGuigan who stole in behind and he was one on one with the keeper. He rounded the keeper and he just literally walked the ball into the net, kicked it from a yard into the net. 1-7 to 7 now after that point from Gavin Wiley. So what a turnaround loss and it was seven points to four at half time in favour of the more. It's now 1-7 to 7 in favour of our goal. Kick out will be taken by Peter Ward. Well, this has been sensational turnaround in this second half. That goal from Shane McGuigan on a point from Gavin Wiley in the space of a minute. Conor O'Neill is on the field to play for Camor. And going off is Paddy Montague wearing 12. So Conor O'Neill, young man, won a counter, county minor title, or an All-Ireland minor title, I should say, last year, but to more, as the ball is in the hands of Barry Collins, Collins gives it back to McManaman, now to more, we've put the penalty card, the questions are being asked to them, can they respond, well, with the possession of Shane McMahon, McMahon comes forward, tackled by Campbell, Campbell on a yellow card, but McMahon still in possession, the ball goes to ground, and Cusco battling for it well, our ball really putting in the tackles all over the place, and well, the referee, Sean Quinn, decides that the ball was picked up the ground and the free will go the way of Tamor. And well, he's brought the ball in further as well because of some words that were said in his ears. And Conor O'Neill, the man who's just on the field of play, he will take the kick out for, or he will take the kick, the free kick for Tamor. And Conor has scored three points in the championship to date, make that number four. That's his first point of the day. He's just on the field of play, Conor O'Neill, and he kicks a point which, well, stems the tide somewhat for the more because they really have been blitzed in the opening stages of this second half, that Kyle Coney point then, that free from Tommy McGuigan, and then that goal, that amazing goal from Shane McGuigan, a crucial goal after five minutes of the second half, left the home six to seven, before Gavin Wiley's point left the home seven to seven, and then Cut O'Neill's point there, leaves it one seven to eight points, we played eight and a half minutes in the second half, kick out is taken by Ryan Coleman, up the go for the oh, brilliant take in the middle of the field by McCarthy. can he get up, Vicky Guy is holding the ground, that should be a free, it is a free, free will go the way of our goal, and big John McCarthy, and really our goal are puffed up, whatever Mickey Donnelly said at half time, Ruth won football, in it goes again, up the go for the ball breaks, what way does it break, it breaks in favour, well it breaks in favour of another team because it's tricked out over the enemy, and it's a kick out, wide ball for the more or for our bow, I should say, and the kick out will be taken by Peter Ward. A lot more urgency now for the more men. Peter Ward, 10 points to 8, 1 7 to 8 points. Our bow lead, 9 minutes and 9 seconds played here in the second half. Peter Ward with the kick out. Oh, not a good one because it's down towards McConville, but Mickey Guy goes well, gets a fist on the McConville, goes back and retrieves the situation. Campbell gives it forward to Coney. Coney on oh, good ball inside, looking there for McGuigan. McGuigan doesn't win it back to Brian McGuigan. McGuigan from distance goes for the score. A brilliant effort from McGuigan. Super score. That's from, was it Brian McGuigan? I believe it was. Oh, brilliant score from Brian McGuigan. He had no room to work in whatsoever, but somehow managed to get his foot onto the ball and he guided it between the sticks and that puts an order goal between the sides again. Majestic McGuigan, him at his best. As Peter Ward takes the, spots the ball 20 metres out. 
A goal between the sides. Brilliant crowd here in Healy Park and joining this rip growing championship final of 2009. Peter Ward with the kick out. Up the goal for it again. Probably will break. It breaks again in favour of Brian Tommy McGregor. I think it is this time. McGregor delivers a good ball down again. Well picked up by Brian McGregor. Ball back inside. Chance for Shane McGregor this time. Oh, brilliant score again. This time from the three McGregor brothers. It was Tommy to Brian. Brian to Shane. The ball over the bar. Fantastic score. 198 points. Well, that was excellent stuff. Tommy McGregor gathering the ball. Giving it inside to Brian. Brian then giving it to the younger brother, Shea. Shea pops the ball over the bar. Again, at a point he has scored in the second half. Add that to his tally that he's got so far of 1 3 in the championship. That means he scored 2 4 in the championship to date. Now, how will the more react as Brian McManaman gives it back there to the ring half back that that's Kevin Donnelly. Foul over there on Colin McCullough. Right down Brian and Tommy another. Three will be two to more. Colin McCullough gives it in towards Carl McCarr. McCann back to McCullough. His side trail by four points. Tommy McGregor back deep in his own defence. Wins the ball. Gives it out there to the wing half back by Shea Forbes. Gives ball inside there towards Kyle Coney. Coney, more influential figure in this second half. And now isolating McGregor in the forward line there. Fabian O'Neill close on him. Good tackle on by O'Neill. McGregor still going forward. McGregor picks it up close to the sideline. McGregor has Wiley with him. Gavin Wiley throws the ball. Comes back out with it. Wiley, main support, has it there from Coney. Coney all the way to the second half. Coney solos on the left. Turns around now, outside of the left boot, looking to turn it inside. Ball fed inside, back and goes to Brian McGregor. He landed quite a few moments ago. Can he land another one? Yes, indeed he can. He salutes the crowd. It's a wonderful score from Brian McGregor. He is on fire in the second half. It's the second point of the second half. And it's a goal who has stormed into a lead. A five-point lead now. 110 to eight points after 12 minutes. What a fantastic turnaround for the men from Abu, the men from the left shore. And they are in control in this second half. Well, it'll be interesting to hear what Mickey Donnelly has to say. Well, we have a lot of time still to play in this game. We've only played 12 and a half minutes in the second half as a few of the Tremor players receive some attention down there. Peter Ward remonstrating with the referee. Fabian O'Neill receiving attention. So too, Ryan McManaman. Must have been a clash of heads or something in there, but Willie Harpo are isolating the danger men, feeding the ball inside to them, and they are really, really punishing the Harpo or the Demore defence in this second half. They're playing all players out apart from Frank McGregor and Solitary, man on the full forward line, and Brian McGregor causing all sorts of problems to Colin Donnelly in this second half as the ball is kicked out again. This time it's held by Brian McGregor or by Ryan McManaman. McManaman, oh, uh, Brian McGregor left a couple of the knees in there, C2 to the corner back, Paul Coney. Well, the referee wanted word with Paul Coney. Looks like a yellow card, yes indeed it is. The second yellow card, Paul Coney and Kieran Campbell. As the ball is fed over there towards Colin McCullough. We're looking to watch, the watch is 13 and a half minutes played. McCullough jinx one way towards the road. He's been held up there by Shea Forbes. Still McCullough. McCullough is fouled. The referee awards the free. McCullough wants to take it quickly. He's going to bring the ball forward. This now becomes kickable for McCullough. It'll suit him all, uh, over there on the right hand side. Suit the left for the kicker. Well, what a pulsating opening. 14 minutes to the second half are both. Well, they've scored a goal and six points in the second half as McCullough kicks it left footed it's on its way, that looks good it is good, a good score for Jamore it steadies the ship somewhat, another point for Colin McCullough and a point for Jamore that's his third point of the game but they need probably more than that I see confirmed attendance here today of 6,465 people here in Healy Park. Excellent crowd in, enjoying this unique championship final. The first time that these two sides have met in a final. Of course, our Burton won it seven times. 68, 71, 72, 73, 84, 87, 
and then they had to wait 11 years to 98. Will there be another 11 years in 09 when the winner? But Ronan McNabb will want to say about that. So too will Sean O'Neill. So O'Neill's shot is on his way. O'Neill's shot is over the bar. O'Neill has been very quiet in this match to date. That's his first point of the set of the game. But it's an important point for Sean O'Neill, an important point for Dermore. It now is the gap once more down to the goal. And that's an important score from Sean Snowy O'Neill. A man has been kept very quiet today, it has to be said because he was on form against Kai Moore. He scored two goals in the semi-final on that occasion. Well, that's his opening score in this game. That comes at an important time. That's the last two scores have gone the way of for Moore, from Colin McCullough and from Sean Snowy O'Neill. Then 10, plays 10 points, 15 minutes, played in the second half, the ball breaks, what way did it break? The referee says there's a foul there in Rexy. Ronan McNabb has it now. McNabb has Fabian O'Neill, not a great ball, but Fabian O'Neill recovers matters furthermore. Has support from McNabb. McNabb comes striding forward again. McNabb, right footed, kicks it down there, looking for McC uh, Connor O'Neill, but this time Gavin Tigg does well. Tigg gives it to his captain, his captain is Kieran Campbell. Campbell, first of all, forward towards Ryan Coley. Or Kyle Coney. Coney gives it back there towards Michael Coleman. Coleman into space again with a tugging and crossing inside. But Tommy McGuigan wins the ball ahead of McCarn. Tommy McGuigan turns on to the left. Or Frank McGuigan turns on to the left. Frank kicks it into the hands of Peter Ward. Peter Ward comes solo and out with the ball. Still solo and out. He's what? 40 metres out from goal. Now delivers a long high ball down towards Colin McCullough. McCullough flicks it on towards Sean Snowy O'Neill. Barry Collins is to his right, but Snowy scored with it. Still in with possession, goes for it. Does it call it? Oh, does it call I don't think it did. No, it didn't. No, the ball was wide. The ball was definitely wide. Oh, God, didn't call enough. It was not of the supporters thought it was. Well, he had men inside on his right. Maybe should have looked up. Maybe should have used them. But the ball definitely didn't call in around the post. And it's a wide ball. Wide ball. Bit of debate in the press box here about that one, but it definitely was wide, it didn't call in. So it's a crucial wide, the first wide of the second half for the uh, more men. Fourth of the game, and still a goal separates the sides. A really, really exciting encounter here in Healy Park. Ball up forward. Rose McNabb comes forward with it again. McNabb is tugged back. He has support from Mickey Gary. Gary flips it back there towards Mc, uh, McMahon. McMahon does well. McMahon still comes forward. McMahon needs support. Has it there if needed. Sean O'Neill. Sean Red O'Neill misses. Tackled there by Gavin Tigg. Did he take the ball out over there? I know it's been kicked out by Tigg. And it's a 45. Uh, Sean O'Neill, I'm sure, will come out and take this 45. Strong play there by Shane McMahon, the 22 year old. Sean O'Neill ran the ball close to the end line, was kicked out by Gavin Take, 45 results, and Sean O'Neill will take it. A man who's noted for dead ball kick it, kicks, particularly from the 45 metre line. This is the chance, this is crucial. They had that wide a few moments ago. This to bring it down to two with 12 minutes remaining. He has men calling for a short if need be, but he'll go for the post, it's on his way. Has it got the distance it has, but has it the accuracy? No, well, it didn't have, well, it had the accuracy as it turned out, and didn't have the distance because John McConville is back on his own uh, goal line. He fetches the ball for a goal, and a goal come out patiently with it, with Kyle Coney, a brilliant pass again from Coney. Brilliant man to pick out a pass as Kyle Coney gives it forward into space. Striding forward, there's the captain, Kieran Campbell. Campbell loses possession. Ricey gets back to him. Ricey puts in the tackle. Ball on the ground. He does a break for Brian McGuigan. Brian McGuigan slides the ball over towards Gavin Wiley. Wiley in acres of space. Wiley goes down, picks it up, turns back, feeds it inside there. The ball is eventually given forward towards Kieran Campbell. Campbell has the corner back there, Paul Coney. Can the corner back score? Yes, indeed he can. Paul Coney salutes the crowd in a stand here in Ely Park. Wonderful score from Paul Coney. Picked up a yellow card a few moments ago. That didn't bother him, that didn't face him. He notches is a wonderful score for the men from our bowl. It's now 1-11 to 10, four points between the sides. And we're down now to the last 10 and a half minutes of this game. Peter Ward with the kick out. Is it going to be Tremor? Agony for them for the second year in a row. They were beat last year by the men from the East. Their, their team was the uh, men from Toronto. Managed, of course, by Damien Castle on that occasion. Well, it's Mickey Donnelly who's in charge of our bow today. And they're lead here in the county final by four points. They've really turned it around. Ronald McNabb 
wins the ball, gives it down towards Snowy. Sean Snow in it. He's faced there by McEwen. Shows his pace, but getting back and getting at him there is McEwen. Has the ball gone out? No, it's still kept in play. Has it gone out now? Yes, indeed, it has. It's good defending. It has to be said by Mike McEwen. He watched that one all the way. Guided Sean Snowy O'Neill out over the end line. And it's a wide ball, another wide for for more. Well, Brett taking stuff in this second half. 20 minutes played. And it's the men from our bowl who are leading 111 to 10 points. The more of Kim through the a tougher passes to get to this final, having played Cole Island on two occasions, and also Eric and Kieran, two replays, eventually winning both of them, and then beating Craig Moore in the final, two, or in the semi final, 2 9 to 10 points. That one has Colin McCullough has it. McCullough on his knees, gives it inside to Sean Red O'Neill, gives it down there to Joe McCusker. Is it Colin O'Neill? It's Warren Anoa out in front. It's O'Neill, or it's McCusker has it. McCusker being very quiet today, being well marshaled. Gives it to McNabb, McNabb over to McCullough. McCullough steps it over towards Rice McManaman. McManaman. 40 metres out, gives it to Sean O'Neill, O'Neill will go for a score, O'Neill kicks it, it's on its way, it is good, it's over the bar, excellent score there from Sean O'Neill, that's his second of the day I believe, his second point of the day, and that reduces the gap to just the, the goal, a goal between the sides, 11 to 11 points, really, really exciting second half here, it has to be said, both sides going for it, everything to play for in this championship final. Listen to this as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, kick out taken. McConville wins it over the far side of the field. Towards McGuigan. McGuigan gives it forward. Looking for Shane McGuigan, the man who has made up the second half. Gives it inside there towards Gavin Tig. Tig over the far side of the field. Tig. Feeds the ball back inside, McGuigan has it, still cutting inside, Jake in on the, the right foot, good ball into space, the space is filled by Mickey Coleman, Coleman goes for the post, Coleman lands it, brilliant score by Mickey Coleman, that's his open point of this game, but what a crucial time to get a score, 112 to 11 points, and it's a goal who lead. Well, Roland McNabb has it now for, okay. Mickey Gary in possession. <laughs> Colin McCullough picks up possession, 45 minutes out, feeds the ball inside there. Towards Snowy, but again, well defended, picking up the loose pieces there. Is it Ron McNabb? Is he fouled? Yes, indeed, he is. That's a free, it's an opportunity to level or to put a goal just between the sides. Colin McCullough, left foot, kicks it over the bar, another point for him. Just a goal between the sides now. And the real excitement here in Healy Park, Austin, it's 1 12 to our goal, it's 12 points to Dramore, who came in as favourites to this match. 23 and a half minutes played. What a turnaround it has been in this second half. Seven points to four, it was in favour of Dramore at half time. Then points from Kyle Coney, Tommy McGuigan, and a goal from young Shane McGuigan, and a point from Gavin Wiley. Meant that our goal scored 1 3 in the open at six minutes, which left it 1 7 to 7 before Conor O'Neill stemmed the tide for Dramore. Then 3 4 the points from Brian McGuigan. McGuigan, Shane McGuigan and Brian McGuigan again left at 110 to 8 before Colin McCullough got a point for Dramore to leave at 110 to 9. Then Sean Snowy O'Neill had another point, 110 to 10, before Paul Coney and Sean O'Neill swapped points, 111 to 11. And then Mickey Coleman with a point, a big midfielder left at 112 to 11. And just as you came across there, Colin McCullough with a point from the free means that it's 112 to 12. It really is a brilliant second half. Both sides really go for it. We've had 17 different scores. We've a crowd of six and a half thousand in here and they really are enjoying a festival of football for quickly in the second half but with 24 and a half minutes played it's our ball the men from the lock shore the men from the east uh, they need 112 to the most 12 points but don't ride off the wall yet 
Coming forward is Colum Donnelly. Colum Donnelly gives it back to Ryan McMenamin. McMenamin gives it. Oh, the ball is intercepted by Big John McConville. McConville cuts it out. Counter attack football now, possibly from the men from our goal. Not a good ball. Brian McGuigan goes to ground. Or it's Tommy or Frank McGuigan goes to ground. Gathers it. McGuigan gives it over to his younger brother. That's Shea. Shea has it. Shea's what, 45 minutes out. Diagonal ball looking for Wiley, but well watched and well put out there by Sean Red O'Neill. Comes forward with it, bounces the ball, gives it over towards Mickey Guy. Lost quieter in the second half, it's been Mickey Guy still in possession. Jersey pulled off him by Big John McConville. And the free will go the way of the more. That's a yellow card for Big John McConville. But I'm sure he'll have to play too much about that at this stage. It slows down the play. As Peter Ward, well, the Dremor supporters' hearts will be in them out as Peter Ward is what? He's up on the 65 metre line in the opposition half. As coming forward with it there is the corner back, Colin Donnelly, but gives it away. And our goal are getting plenty of men behind the ball, defending the, the, the space down there, making sure that there's no goals, because a goal would be crucial if it could come the way of the Dremor men. But our goal with McCarver delivers it long, again into space. Trying to fill that space is Shane McGuigan. McGuigan does well out in front of Cal McCann. Back deep in his, his, well, his boots being held there by Shane McGuigan. He's been fouled the referee. It was the free. There's a substitute down below us. It's Nishi O'Neill, I think, possibly, that's um, coming on to the field of play. No, indeed, it's not. It's uh, Patrick Tigg who's coming on. Patrick Tigg. Uh, looks more like Nishi O'Neill, it has to be said. Where number 22 and going into the forward line well. We'll check that one out in a few moments, but Peter Ward will follow the play. Peter Ward gives the ball away. Look at where he's playing. This is crazy stuff from the goalkeeper, it has to be said. I'm not sure why he's not back in his own in his own goal line trying to defend. Ryan Porter scratches his head down below us. Now Gavin Wiley. Peter Ward back intercepts play again. Gives the ball out there over the far side looking for Snowy O'Neill. Snowy doesn't get to it as well, won by Mark McCone. Mark McCone from distance, sees the goalkeeper out, but Cal McCarn is back there on his own line. Cal McCarn uh, deputising as a goalkeeper, and really this is crazy stuff. Ryan Porter is telling his goalkeeper to stay back on his line as Ryan McManaman comes with a good play. 27 and a half minutes in the second half. Just a goal between the sides, three minutes left to play. Is it going to be heartache for the war? A yellow card there. I think it was given away of Frank McGuigan. Not quite sure. Referee allows play to continue. Ball is with one McNabb. McNabb comes forward again. Sean Snowy or McCullough has it. McCullough, is he fouled? Yes, indeed he is. Says the referee. That's a free, and that is an opportunity to reduce the gap to two points, I would suggest. A good opportunity it is. As the ball is knocked away out of McCullough's hands. He's tossed on with Gavin Tague, but still, it should be an opportunity to reduce the gap to just two points. I'm sure our ball will throw on a few substitutes at this stage to slow the game down if at all possible. But Colin McCullough is the man with the ball in his hand. McCullough, he's scored what in this game so far? Three points, I believe. Four points, possibly, in the second half, or in this game. So, this for number five. It's on its way. It's over the bar. It's a point for Colin McCullough. It's a point for the Moore, and it's a two-point game now in Healy Park here. One down is 13 points. Well, the Moore lost the final last year to Tano. Our bowl have come to into the first final since 1998, 11 years ago. It was 11 years before that in 87 when they won their sixth title. Of course, the Jubilee team was celebrated out here today, but Ryan McManaman is not worrying about that. The other are the Demore people. They're looking up McManaman, they're looking up McNabb. McNabb could land a point here. Gives it to McCullough. McCullough looked to get on the left. McCullough for a sixth. McCullough kicks it. McCullough puts it over a bar. There's just a point between the sides. Brilliant score by Colin McCullough. He's hit the last three for Demore. Two of them from freeze, one of them from play. That brings his tally to six. And now there's just a point between the sides. And don't be surprised if we have a replay of it in this game here. 29 and a half minutes played. Well, substitute coming on there. Shea McGuigan makes way. Coming on to the side is Jared Mooney wearing number 20. This is crucial. Crucial. Kick out here for the more. Who can who win this ball? It's on its way by Ryan Coleman. 
a point between the sides, fisted forward there, there was the ball break, it breaks in the hands of Brian McGuigan, the ball fed forward again, out in front was Carl McCarr, the car will do well to keep this ball in play, does so, tries to get round his man, does get round his man, strong play from Carl McCarr, brilliant play from the young 21 year old, striding forward again, McCarr takes the ball down into space, looking for it. Conor O'Neill, Conor O'Neill didn't get his hands on, he's faced by Gavin Tigg, Tigg gives it to McKeown, McKeown is tackled strongly, referee says play can continue, Gavin Tigg has it, Gavin gives it up there towards the substitute, the substitute is Kieran Devlin, Devlin kicks it forward, Fabian O'Neill slips, crucial slip by Fabian O'Neill, it's Nishi O'Neill coming forward with this the chance to seal it, O'Neill shoots over the bar! A point for the more of for our ball. I believe that's Nishi O'Neill, the program tells me that it's not, but well, Nishi O'Neill will give the credit to it as another substitute comes on the field of play. This time it's Simon Tegwer, number 23, but two points between the sides. We didn't see the board get up yet. We're now in the 31st minute. We're not sure how long it's been out at all. Sean Snow O'Neill gives the ball. Gives it to McManaman. McManaman gives it forward to Sean O'Neill. Sean O'Neill coming. There's a man inside. Can he see him? He has. Sean Snow is a pounder. It has to be a pounder. It is. It is a pounder. We have a penalty here with just, we're into injury time. This is the chance for to award the winner. Who was the man that was taken down? Not quite sure who's inside. It was a body Collins it was. Well, there's men blessing themselves. There's men on their knees. They're playing. They don't know what excitement and what drama we're witnessing here. This is a chance. We're into the 31st minute of the second half. And this is the chance to win it. When this man will be receiving some attention for a few moments. Well, we have to see Colin McCullough will probably take the penalty. Is it Barry Collins that's on the ground? I believe it is. So, we have that. Oh, this is just such excitement here in Healy Park. 1 14 is 16. The more of 14. This could well be the last kick of the game. We're not sure how many minutes we're playing, how many minutes we're added on in, in the second half. We're not quite sure how much additional time was allowed. But. It is, well it was Ron McNabb I think was the player who was fired, it looks like, well we'll identify the player who was, I think possibly was Roland McNabb that was fired, he's up, he's back on his feet, I've had the fact, yeah you come to me, yeah you come to me, no whatever, you call it, yeah. There is serious drama here, Roma. It's a whole one to the team. It's the more 14 points. There is a penalty to the more. They trailed by two points. The clock says 32 and a half minutes played. This is possibly the last kick of the game. Referee Sean Quinn is trying to sort out, get the players out of the way. I think it was Ron McNabb who was pulled out of the penalty. It was a sparkling move, the whole length of the field. It was fed into McNabb. He was pulled down. Colin McCullough has the ball in the spot. This is crucial. This is the chance to win the, the, the Lean Cup for the more. It's Colin McCullough against Ryan Coleman. McCullough, he scored six points to date. We look at the watch, 32 minutes played. Here he comes left footed, gets to win it. It's in the net. It's a goal for the more. The more have snatched it right at the death. What scenes round Healy Park. This is quite amazing. The second half has been dramatic. It's the more who need by a point on. Well, Ricey McManaman has the ball. The more they don't know what to do now at this stage. The need by a goal. Conor O'Neill has it. Conor O'Neill will run to the corner. O'Neill still has it. O'Neill retains possession. O'Neill gives it down to McMahon. McMahon loses the ball. It's in the hands now of Paul Coney. Coney is tackled. There's a free to our ball. Our ball need a free. Our ball. It's all over. It's all over. The more have won it in the most dramatic fashion. It is sensational. A goal right at the death from a penalty spot by Colin McCullough. I've never seen scenes like it before in my life. The field has been invaded. The players are all been surrounded. The referee can have scored it off. There's a bit of aggravation down there, but everything is okay, I think. Well, the referee has been brought down into the, the tunnel. Well, we don't need scenes like that there. That's a disgrace. But leave that aside. The more of the county championship. Shock, there is shock all round us. Our bow are in shock. The more are in shock. This has been sensational. It's the more who win it. 114 to 113 in the most dramatic fashion. 
Well, it's been an absolutely sensational second half. It was seven points before at half time. Little did we know what we were in store for. Our bow hit one goal and seven in the second half. And well, what did our bow hit? Well, one nine, I think, in the second half. So, well, there is serious drama here in Healy Park. But for now, the winners of this match are. The winners of the match on a final score is to more 1 14 to our goals a goal and 13. And really, well, I suppose the other side deserves to lose this one, but if there's a winner, it is all to more.